There is a star in our galaxy that behaves unlike any other. It does not shine the brightest, burn the hottest, or even sit quietly in a familiar corner of the night sky. Instead, it spins so fast that it puts jet engines to shame. It is so dense that a single grain of its material would weigh more than a gram. But that's not even the scariest part. The real problem is that this object is unstable. It is on the edge. One wrong move, a little bit of mass, a little bit of pressure, and it will collapse into something even worse, a black hole. And the thing is, it's not some distant object at the edge of the observable universe. It's in our galaxy, spinning, feeding, and growing. Scientists have known about it for some time. They even gave it a name. However, despite all the data collected, one question remains unanswered. When will it explode? Or perhaps a better question is, are we sure it hasn't already happened? When a massive star reaches the end of its life, it does not go quietly. It burns everything it has, trying to fight the inevitable. Gravity. And when its nuclear fuel is exhausted, gravity wins. The core collapses. The outer layers explode in a supernova. And what remains is something strange, something small, something incredibly dense. A neutron star is formed. It is not simply dead, but transformed. A typical neutron star is not much larger than a city with a diameter of about 20 kilometers. You could drive across it in less than an hour if you managed to land on it without being crushed or vaporized. But this small space contains more mass than our solar system. It's as if you took all the people, planets, games, and oceans in our solar system and crammed them into a ball the size of Manhattan. This is where the madness begins. Because a neutron star is so compact, it has an incredible density. One teaspoon of this substance would weigh over a billion tons. That's more than all the buildings in New York City combined. If you dropped a piece the size of a sugar cube on Earth, it wouldn't stay on the surface. It would pierce the Earth's crust, tear through the mantle, and continue its flight to the core. It wouldn't even slow down. But that's just the beginning. Some neutron stars don't rotate slowly like Earth. They spin very fast, so fast that they emit bursts of radiation into space, resembling the light of a lighthouse. We call them pulsars, not because they pulse like a heart, but because these rays fly past us at regular intervals, and when we detect them, they look like pulses. Initially, scientists had no idea what they were. In 1967, when Jocelyn Bell first picked up the rhythmic signals of the first known pulsar, the team did not rule out the existence of aliens. That's how strange the phenomenon was. What was sending radio pulses from the depths of space with the precision of an atomic clock? Later, we managed to figure it out. It wasn't ET. It was something much stranger. These objects rotate at hundreds of revolutions per second. That's faster than a helicopter, faster than a kitchen blender, and in some cases, even faster than a jet turbine. They are cosmic flywheels that rival man-made machines in terms of speed and endurance, and they don't slow down easily. Many of them have been spinning like this for millions of years. Pulsars maintain these speeds for millions of years, thanks to their enormous angular momentum and low energy losses. And this is where the danger lies. Some pulsars do not exist alone in the vacuum. They find companions not by choice, but by necessity, in a process called accretion. This process allows them to spin at high speeds for a very long time. Nearby stars are drawn into their gravitational pull. Over time, the pulsar accumulates enough material from these unfortunate companions. Doomed to destruction, often a low-mass star, it is stripped of its outer layers and its material is torn away in a stream of superheated plasma. This spiral stream of gas falls into the pulsar providing it with enormous energy. It spins faster. It gains mass. It becomes more extreme. Scientists call these pulsars black widows. Like a spider, they eat their partner after mating. Only in this case, the pulsar not only kills its companion, but eats it atom by atom. This process does not last forever. There is a limit to the mass that a neutron star can contain. When it approaches this limit, the structure is unable to hold it. The pressure of the neutrons increases. Gravity prevails. The pulsar collapses again, this time into a black hole. So when we say that some of these stars are dangerous, 
We don't mean that they will explode and send shock waves through the galaxy like supernovae. We mean that they have already passed the point where they were ordinary stars. They are dense, powerful, spinning time bombs. And the one we're focusing on isn't just any pulsar. It's the fastest spinning and quietest neutron star ever discovered. It's located in our galactic neighborhood. I'll show you what makes it special. Not all pulsars are the same. Most of them spin fast, that's true. Most of them are dense and powerful. But every now and then, astronomers discover something that doesn't fit the definition, something that redefines it. One of these is PSRJ0952-0607. It doesn't have a flashy name, and it doesn't appear in science fiction movies. But it has a resume that sounds like a warning from the universe itself. It spins at a speed of 707 revolutions per second. That's not a typo. It makes over 700 full rotations every second. You can't even blink that fast, even if you try really hard. It's so fast that its surface moves at a speed close to the speed of light. And yet it doesn't fall apart. Gravity holds it together, squeezing it so tightly that even atoms no longer exist on its surface. All that remains is neutron matter, so tightly compressed that electrons and protons merge. As if that weren't enough, it is also the quietest neutron star ever discovered, nearly 2.4 times larger than Saturn, all within a space only 20 kilometers wide. This combination of extreme rotation and mass close to critical mass makes this object dangerous. Here's the catch. Neutron stars shouldn't weigh that much. The upper limit, known as the tolman oppenheimer volkoff limit, is estimated to be around 2.5 to 3 times the mass of the Sun. Once this value is exceeded, the pressure of the neutrons is unable to counteract gravity. The star collapses, forming a black hole. And this one? It's close. Very close. Now we know how it got there. It didn't start out so massive. It eats itself into this state. A white dwarf, the fading remnant of the star, orbits the pulsar and is slowly being torn apart. Like a drop of water falling into a drain, its matter swirls toward the pulsar. Some of it falls into the center. Some of it forms a hot, glowing accretion disk. Either way, the pulsar gains mass. It also gains rotational speed. Like a skater pulling their arms in, the decrease in radius increases the moment of inertia. The more the pulsar devours, the faster it spins. This is what makes these systems so extreme. This process not only accelerates the pulsar, but also puts pressure on it. Every gram of stolen matter is a step closer to the critical point, a step closer to collapse. Astronomers call this a black widow pulsar, and the analogy is apt. The pulsar sucks its partner dry, and nothing remains. The white dwarf disappears, the pulsar collapses, and eventually nothing remains but an unstable, overeaten neutron star waiting for the final impulse. And this is where the disturbing part begins. Unlike a supernova, which is preceded by a visible explosion, this collapse would give us little warning. There would be no flash of light or giant shock wave, just naked silence. The pulses would stop, and in that silence, a black hole would be born. We don't know when this will happen. Maybe in a million years. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe it has already happened. And we are just waiting, knowing that it will take about 14,000 light years to reach us. To be clear, this object is located in our galaxy. It is not some distant curiosity in a remote cluster. It's a ticking time bomb, spinning at full speed, right here next to us in the Milky Way. The only reason it hasn't turned into a black hole yet is because it's still held together by its own gravity. It spins, gaining time, but eventually time will run out. We assume that this will happen. We assume that the pulsar will eventually cross that invisible line. It will consume enough mass from its dying companion and the delicate balance that keeps it going will be disrupted. What exactly will happen then? Well, the star won't explode. Not in the way we imagine explosions. It will collapse silently, instantly. One moment it is a pulsar, spinning, radiating, pulsing like a galactic lighthouse, and the next it is gone. The pulses stop. The light disappears. The radio waves we receive from Earth simply cut off. There is no sound. There is no flash. It's as if someone pressed the pause button, and what remains is a black hole. At this point, real physics comes into play. 
Unlike a supernova, which ejects most of the star's mass in an explosion of light and gas, a pulsar collapsing into a black hole leaves nothing visible behind. There is no outer shell to eject. The matter is already compressed to the limit. The collapse is therefore pure. Director, effective. The mass is still there, but now it is hidden behind the event horizon. The gravitational pull becomes so strong that even light cannot escape. From the outside, the object becomes invisible, but its presence is still felt. The space around it becomes curved. Time slows down in its vicinity, and everything that is too close will fall into the center. The good news is that even if this happened tomorrow, we would not feel it on Earth, at least not for some time. The pulsar is about 14,000 light years away from us, so if it collapsed today, the effects would not reach us for 14,000 years. Technically speaking, it is already collapsing. We are still seeing the version that existed 14,000 years ago. The light we detect, the pulses we measure, are snapshots from the past. But let's assume, for the sake of curiosity, that it collapses. What does this mean for the surrounding space? Here things get unpleasant. When a pulsar collapses into a black hole, it loses the structure that kept its radiation rays in line. The regular pulses cease, but the surroundings do not immediately calm down. The accretion disk, all the matter still spinning around it, continues to feed it. But now it is not feeding the pulsar. It feeds the newly formed black hole. This may briefly cause the formation of what is called a relativistic jet, a stream of ultra-energetic particles and radiation ejected from the poles of the black hole, accelerated to speeds close to the speed of light by magnetic fields and rotational energy. If these jets are directed towards us, even from a distance of 14,000 light years, they could cause serious damage. This is not speculation. Such a phenomenon has already occurred. Astronomers, including Adrian L. Malo and Brian C. Thomas, suspect that the mass extinction about 440 million years ago, known as the Late Ordovician Extinction, may have been caused by a burst of gamma radiation from a nearby neutron star or black hole. It would not hit Earth like a bomb. Instead, it would silently erode our ozone layer, leaving the surface exposed to UV radiation from the sun. The result? A global collapse of ecosystems, especially marine life. Again, this is a rare phenomenon, extremely rare and the probability that a pulsar's beam will be pointed in our direction is even smaller. In most cases, these streams shoot off in random directions. The vastness of space is usually enough to keep us out of range. But the point is, it could happen. That's why scientists are constantly watching the sky. But let's turn the question around. What would happen if there were no sudden collapse? What would happen if the pulsar continued to spin, slowly attracting more and more mass, increasing the pressure, and getting closer and closer to the critical point, still rotating at a speed of 707 times per second, at some point, it would reach a state where even rotation could not save it. Then, in the blink of an eye, the entire structure would be destroyed. Some models suggest that this could cause an extremely fast, short-lived burst of gravitational waves rippling through space-time itself. Detectors such as LIGO and Virgo could pick this up giving us a real-time signal of a pulsar collapsing into a black hole. This would be the first scientific discovery of its kind, but it would also be cosmic proof that one of the fastest, densest, and most extreme stars in the galaxy is about to die a second death, quietly, without warning. And what will replace it? An invisible void, a gravitational well from which no light can escape. The beam that once pulsed across the galaxy like a clock will disappear. From a cosmic point of view, this is the end of history. But from our point of view, it's just the beginning. Because there is another type of neutron star that doesn't wait to collapse to become dangerous. It doesn't have to spin 700 times per second to wreak havoc. It's not faster. It's not silent. It's just magnetic. You might think that a star spinning hundreds of times per second, weighing more than our sun and teetering on the brink of collapse is the worst case scenario. But nature, as always, can go one step further. There is another type of neutron star. It doesn't spin as fast. It doesn't have to. It doesn't need a companion star to devour. It doesn't rely on radiation to make its presence known. Instead, it warps the very fabric of matter with something much quieter and much more terrifying. 
It's called a magnetar. Now take everything we know about neutron stars, density, gravity, compactness, and add a magnetic field so intense that it can literally tear atoms apart. It doesn't just ionize them like normal radiation does. It doesn't just heat them up. It tears apart the very fabric of matter. A typical pulsar already has a magnetic field trillions of times stronger than Earth's. But magnetars increase that number so much that it ceases to make sense. A magnetar's field can be over a thousand trillion times stronger than Earth's. If you were near one, even thousands of kilometers away, your atoms would not stay together. The chemistry of your body would break down under the influence of magnetic pressure. And this is not just theory. We have already observed its effects. In 2004, a magnetar called SGR 1806-20, located about 42,000 light years from Earth in the constellation Sagittarius, emitted such an intense burst of gamma radiation that it caused the sensors of many satellites to malfunction, even though it came from the other side of the galaxy. For a fraction of a second, this magnetar outshone all other sources of X-ray radiation in the sky combined. If it had been just 10 light years closer, Earth would have been in danger. And this is where the trouble begins. Unlike pulsars, which rotate and gradually fade away, magnetars are unstable. Their magnetic fields do not remain static. The accumulated energy causes tension to build up beneath the surface, and the pressure becomes too great, leading to a stellar quake. Imagine an object the size of a planet made of ultra-dense neutron matter spinning like an egg. The crust shifts. The magnetic field changes, releasing so much energy that nuclear weapons seem like firecrackers in comparison. These tremors trigger bursts of gamma and X-ray radiation traveling at the speed of light, without warning, without buildup, just a loud flash, releasing 100,000 suns worth of energy in a fraction of a second. We are lucky that the nearest magnetar is 8,000 light years away, far enough that even a powerful eruption would not harm Earth. But if one were to explode 40 light years away, it could destroy the ozone layer, exposing us to deadly UV radiation. Magnetars do not live long. Their magnetic fields decay within 10,000 to 100,000 years, making them rare, with only about 10 in 1,000 neutron stars being magnetars. However, one is enough. Even when they are quiet, their fields flood nearby planets with deadly radiation and a breakup nearby would mean instant sterilization. No supernova or black hole is needed, just a crack in the crust, and it's game over. Magnetars don't announce themselves. They're like silent cosmic minds waiting to detonate. We have neutron stars spinning fast enough to be cosmic lighthouses, magnetars with the strongest magnetic fields in the universe, and pulsars on the verge of collapse. But what if one of them got close? Space is chaotic and some neutron stars move at speeds of over 1,500 kilometers per second, enough to leave the galaxy. Imagine one of them stuck in Jupiter's orbit, 500 million miles from Earth, still far away? Think again. Its gravity would disrupt the orbits of Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, causing chaos that would spread inward. Its X-rays, gamma rays, and charged particles would destroy the Earth's magnetic field, destroy the ozone layer, and sterilize the surface. Satellites would stop working, GPS would lose signal, radios would fall silent, and the aurora would spread across the world like a constant warning. If it is a magnetar, its proximity alone could wreak havoc, its magnetic field ripping electrons from the atoms in your body and instantly dissolving them.